you're tracking the story, and you're on about page 150, I hope, um, I, I hope that you're starting to see some change in the characters. You know, Skip, in the early characters, was praying some kind of weak prayers. Lord, just keep him alive one more day. That was one of his prayers. And hopefully now you're starting to see some slightly more scripture-filled prayers, some more powerful, confident prayers. And I wanted to draw your attention to two of them tonight, just as we sort of think through the story and, and what it means to be a powerful prayer warrior. And, and honestly, Skip did learn to be a powerful prayer warrior in men's Bible study. That was very important um, discipline that he added to his life when we were going through a dark season. And anytime you're going through a good season or a dark season, you need to be in Bible study. You're gonna, if you're going through a good season, you're going to be enriching someone else. If you're going through a dark season, that's where you're going to find hope and help. So in the story, if you may recall, um, this, this I'm going to read to you from page 113. Uh, Skip is about to go to Bible study. That Bible study met at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was on a route that was completely the opposite direction from where he wanted to go to work. So it was not convenient at all. So on any given, I think it was Thursday mornings or Friday mornings, it was so easy for him to say, you know, I'm just not going to do that. But he knew that if he would get up and go, that he was going to get something powerful out of it. And so I recorded uh, a, just some, a little vignette from that moment. He's thinking about Bible study. He doesn't really want to go, but he's trying to build himself up to get in the car. And on page 113, it says this. As a comfort to his soul, Skip quoted part of Psalm 121. It was one of several beautiful scriptures that he had memorized to help him get through dark times. I look toward the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And the creator of these hills, along with the heavens and the earth, the Lord God will keep me from all harm. He will watch over my life. Lord, Skip finished his prayer as he drove up to the coffee shop. Can I transfer some of my protection from that promise in Psalm 121 to my son? Is my faith big enough for both of us? So that was uh, a little bit of a more, more thoughtful prayer than just, okay, Lord, just keep him alive one more day. <laughs> you can see that he's starting to pray scripture. That was something we learned how to do is when we don't know how to pray, or we don't know the words, or we've said the same prayer over and over again, just turn to God's word and read it back to him. He he's heard it a million times, but he still loves it, just like we do. And that's something we learn to do. And one more prayer to kick us off tonight. I want to read from page 148 from the book. I hope you got there. Uh, this is a moment in time when Skip, and you know now, because you're getting a sneak peek behind the scenes, you know that I was there too, but my voice just, just couldn't come out in the story, and so my voice is missing, but uh, this happened to me as well. So it was, a, it was a very tough day to visit because there was fog between where we lived and the place that he was, was incarcerated. Um, you have to get there on time or they lock the door. So we were very, very, very stressed, driving in the fog on, on tiny farm-to-market roads, trying to get there, knowing that we might be late. And sure enough, we, after an hour and a 45-minute drive, we drove up, we ran to the door, and we were trying to remember to have the, only those things in the right pocket, so you have to be organized when you get there. We get to the door, and literally the lady is walking up to the door and locks it in our face. <laughs> No, now we're going to waste another hour and a half. Well, they, every day at 9 o'clock, I guess they count every inmate to make sure that they have the same number that they're supposed to have. And you have to wait outside for at least an hour. So we're just waiting in the parking lot. And we ran into this other family, a mother uh, and two small children, somewhere in the 7 to 11 age range, probably. And we saw them when we fought off. We got to chatting and visiting because we were just standing in line. And then um, they had all the right clothes, by the way. They, were, they had the right outfit on so they could get in. And um, we saw them visiting with their family member, while their loved one, while we were there. And then somehow on the way out, we managed to see them leaving several hours later. And we were just moved to say a prayer for them. I don't really know why or what, but the Spirit just spoke very clearly. We should pray for this family. So on page 148, here is that prayer. <clears throat> Skip bowed his head again and said, Lord, perhaps you allowed me to be late today. 
just so that I can see that little family and pray for them. Please protect them and give them your favor. If they don't know you, please bring someone along this week to tell them the good news about Jesus. Show them this week that you are there for them. May they receive some assurance that even though their loved one is separated from them, that you will never leave them. Amen? Amen. Let's, uh, let's go on to the first slide. Uh, we're going to talk about pillar number three. <laughs> uh, I want you to know that your intercessory prayers are very powerful and are probably having more impact than you may even realize. And I know there's a lot of prayer warriors in this group because there's people in this room right now that I turn to when I need prayer. And, there are ma- and, and Sally's prayer tonight just, just blessed me so much. It was so funny that she was shaking her head saying she didn't want to do it. Because the thing that she said that blessed me so much was, Lord, please empty me of anything that might keep me from hearing something you have for me. I love that. That's a prayer we should pray all the time because we're all distracted. We can hear one thing on the radio and get angry or fearful. And that can keep you from hearing what God wants you to hear. But as we speak back to him, it's important to remember. I'm going to tell you three things, and then I'm going to end with something that's important for people who've been waiting for a long time for an answered prayer. The one thing that we need to, well, three things that we need to really focus on. The the first one is that God wants to answer your prayers. Of course, he is a sovereign, holy God. So you can go on to the next slide. He knows what's best for us, and we don't. (laughs) So sometimes we're praying for things that may not be the best thing for us. A good analogy would be to, to think about your Your 14-year-old comes to you and says, Dad, I love that old truck of yours. Can I drive the truck? Well, you might say, well, son, next time we go to the farm, you can drive across the pasture. But you're not going to give your 14-year-old the keys, right? Because that would not be wise. God is wise, and so he knows what we need, no matter what we're praying for. But there's so many beautiful promises in the Bible that he wants to give us the desires of our heart. I love the one from Psalm 37 that says, Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Both of these two that I have up there are very famous, right? But do you really incorporate that into your prayers? When you sit down to talk to him, do you think about the fact that he's so excited to see you? Remember last week we talked about having joy and how the joy of the Lord, his contagious joy that you're there, can fill you up and give you strength? He loves you, and he wants to hear from you. Uh, There's another scripture that says his ear is inclined to you. And I love that picture that he's literally waiting for us to come and ask. And he does not get tired of our asking. So that's principle number one, that we need to remember that he wants to hear from you. The second scripture I have is Matthew 21, 21. And um, I love this scripture. It's one of two that sound a lot alike in this in this particular instance, Jesus had just, uh, I don't know, this is such a funny story, he had just caused the fig tree to wither because it didn't bear fruit. And his disciples are amazed and astonished. Why are they amazed and astonished after all they've already seen? But they were. And they said, Lord, how did that happen? And he said, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what I just did to the fig tree, but also you can say to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. And then later on, again, it's described that he tells them, you can tell the mount, you can move mountains with your prayers if you just have the faith of a mustard seed. And so if you're not seeing any mountains move, you might think to yourself, well, I must not have the faith of a mustard seed, right? Is there something wrong with my faith? And all throughout scripture, it talks about the fact that Jesus tells them that if you pray in my name, I will answer you. If you pray in my name, my Father will hear and answer you. I desire to give you the desires of your heart. So if you're not seeing the answers to your prayers, you might wonder, well, is there something wrong with my faith? Possibly, but maybe not. There may be several reasons. So this is our second principle. Back to that first idea, though. One of the reasons you may not have seen the answers to your prayers yet is that you may be praying for something that God isn't ready to give you or you're not ready for. But the second principle is that God may be moving in the heavenly realms and you just don't see it yet. That is something that is a very powerful principle that is happening all around us. Because we can't see, we're so finite, right? We're so human. Remember Paul said, now I see dimly, but one day I will see. 
because there's so much going on around us. Uh, and I think it was Elijah that had to show his servant. Remember, they were surrounded by heavenly angels, and the servant was terrified, and he prayed that God would show Gehazi the angels so that he could see what was happening in the heavenly realm. Think about that when you're praying to God. If you're praying for a long time for something and you haven't seen an answer, this is a very powerful scripture that when I came across it in the book of Daniel, I was so blessed by it. And it's really just something that's kind of worked on me for several years that God is moving in the heavenly realm, even if I'm so impatient on earth that I don't see the results. And what was happening here is that Daniel was very moved by a vision that he had. He earnestly sought God to give him the answer to what was going to happen. He was scared. He was fasting and mourning for 21 days. Finally, an angel appears to him and says this, Daniel, I started out to answer your prayer the moment you prayed, but I have literally been fighting a heavenly battle for 21 days. God had to send me extra help to get here to answer this prayer. And wouldn't it be cool if that happened? Although anytime, I always think that wouldn't it be great if God just gave me a big billboard like Pastor Bill says or something like that. It would be a little bit terrifying probably too, because most of the people that did get visited by angels that thought it, you know, sounds very glamorous, but most of them did what? It fell on their face. <laughs> they were completely horrified. But I think this is such a beautiful little picture that we get. That there our our prayers may be moving those mountains outside of our human ability to see it. But they are moving. God is working in our prayers. Those prayers are powerful. So never get weary in your prayers. Prayers. And that's very easy for me to say, but I hope that this is filling you up with a little bit of refreshment tonight. Even if you've been praying for the same thing for a long time, uh, and we're going to go over the Lord's Prayer in just a minute on how to just, just pray like God taught you to pray and don't be weary. The final thing I wanted to say of our three principles about uh, just refreshing your prayer life is that the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And that means that the Holy Spirit is interceding for you. I love this scripture from Romans that says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts and knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Isn't that just a beautiful thought? No matter how inarticulate you are, which Sally was so beautiful earlier, and she was like, oh, I hate to do that. Why? It was so amazing. We may feel that we're inadequate because that's just part of our human flesh that we have on. But the Holy Spirit is putting this prayer in front of God in the right way, in the right manner, and in, in showing him our heart. In fact, I found a, a beautiful image that would be uh, like Instagram worthy, this next slide. I love this. It says, Dear Lord, I can't find the right words. Can you please just listen through my heart? I thought that was so sweet. And that's such a beautiful picture of how you really don't have to use great words. <laughs> you can literally just open up your Bible, sit in front of it, and bow your head and say the, the Lord's Prayer, which we're going to look at in a minute, and then just, just think on what it is that you're wishing for, that you're hoping for. And just have a regular conversation with him as if he was in the room. You know, Lord, you know this is uncomfortable, that I hate it. <laughs> it's okay to say those things to God because he already knows how you feel. He wants you to express it. And what you'll find is that when you are expressing it, somehow that Holy Spirit intervention will come back to encourage you in prayer. So the Lord did teach us how to pray, though. And this is such a beautiful example that you've heard millions of times maybe in your life as a believer, but we should always... Go back to it every now and then. So I'm going to put the Lord's Prayer up here. And I thought maybe we should say it together. Should we say it together? Let's start with the Our Father part. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil. I heard some of you say trespasses anyway, even though debtors was up there. I heard you say it, because you memorized it that way, right? But uh, on this next slide, somebody has taken this, and I've seen this in my Bible 
you know, Sunday school when I was in fifth grade, I think. But it's still so important that you unpack it and remember it. There's several different aspects of prayer in this prayer. There's adoration, there's confession, there's thanksgiving, and then the ask, the supplication that we get our daily bread. It's so important that we start our prayers with praise and worship and just putting him in the right place of sovereignty. God can literally do anything that we ask for. He can move a mountain. He can put flesh on dead bones. He can restore what the locusts have eaten. He can bring people back to life. He, he, can, he can restore dead things. I mean, he can do anything. So we need to put him in the right place when we're praying, right? So that we always are thinking about that before we start asking. It's very easy to start asking when, the, when you're in the moment, but um, it's just beautiful to spend that time in, in praise and in confession. If you haven't done that recently, don't forget that part. We do uh, separate ourselves from God's best a little bit every day. It might be just in our thought life, it might be in some of our words, and the confession part is really important as well before we start asking. And finally, I just wanna leave you with uh, uh, two more slides, one more thought. The, um, if you've been praying for something for a long time, and I know there's some of you in the room, any, any place you're gonna be with another bunch of believers, there's somebody that's been praying for something for a long time, uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. I want you to remember that there are so many examples in the Bible of intercessory prayer being something that Jesus answered, so especially if you're praying for someone else. You know, I know that if you're a mother, especially if you're praying for a child, a lot of times we will, the evil one will say to us, well, if they're not praying, how are my prayers half as effective? No, the answer to that is clearly no. You can intercede on someone else's behalf, whether they're praying or not. I, I don't know if anybody was praying for the man in the tombs that uh, was, you know, remember that famous story where Jesus healed him from demonic possession and sent all the de demons into the pig herd? Probably no one was praying for that young man. In fact, they were probably praying for the opposite of what he wanted. And instead of restoration, they may have been praying for his demise because he was so evil and so hurtful to the community. But Jesus sought him out. But there's also many, many good examples like this one from Matthew. Uh, I love this story of the Roman centurion where he approaches Jesus and he tells him that his servant is ill. And Jesus says right away, and I don't know why, but just immediately he says, I'll come to your house. And the Roman centurion says, you don't need to come to my house. I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. You just need to say the word and my servant will be healed. And this is what Jesus says to him, go. It will be done for you just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed that very hour. And I love that because he had so much faith. And so if you're having faith for something that you've been praying for for a long time, you need to be refreshed tonight and know that those mountains are moving in the heavenly realm, that God wants to answer that prayer. And the last slide I have for you tonight is that the one prayer that he wants to answer the most is for someone's salvation. In fact, Jesus himself said, I will leave the 99 right here this minute to go after the lost one. So if you have a lost one in your family or in someone you love, this is so important for you to remember. Just pray that prayer back to him. Just like Skip did in that, that uh, excerpt that I read earlier. Lord, you said that you would leave the 99 to go after my son, my daughter, my brother, my spouse. I'm trusting for that. I'm believing for that because of your goodness. Amen.